Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video let's learn how to do something very useful. We're going to do some Boolean logic using meshes with ProBuilder. This is super useful for when you want to cut an object to make something like a door or a window, or when you want to merge two objects together, or just get the intersection mesh. It's very easy to do, but it's surprisingly hidden, so let's learn how to use it. If you prefer a more guided path with step-by-step -step lectures, then check out my complete courses. Learn how to make a Builder Defender game using C Sharp just like I make my own Steam games. Or learn how to make games entirely using visual scripting. Or learn all about Unity with the Ultimate Overview course, which contains over 30 lectures, each covering a different tool or feature of the engine to help you make better games faster. I'm always available in the courses Q&A section, answering your questions every single day. So check out all the courses with the link in the description. Okay, so let's learn how to do some interesting things using ProBuilder. I had to learn how to do this for an upcoming video, and it actually took quite a while to find out how to do it since the option is hidden deep, so I'm guessing most of you don't know about this super useful feature. Hopefully this video will show up when people search for this. So the feature in question is doing some Boolean logic with two meshes, so it's great for cutting holes, merging meshes, or getting the intersection. Over here in this project I have this simple wall object, and now the thing that I need to do for an upcoming video was figure out how to cut this object into various pieces. So first you go into the package manager and you'll look for the ProBuilder package. Here I've got version 4.5.2, although I believe this feature exists in pretty much every version. So when it's installed, you can go over here into tools, ProBuilder and open up the ProBuilder window. Now with that, the first thing that you need to do is take this mesh, which as you can see, this is a perfectly normal mesh. And the first thing that we need is just to convert it into a ProBuilder mesh. So just select the object, make sure you're on object selection. And then up here, there's the really nice ProBuilderize menu. So just click on it and it automatically converts this into a ProBuilder mesh. Okay, now I need something to make the cut. So let me just go up here, make a new 3D cube. And now let's say I want to cut a little corner of this. Okay, I want to cut that part on the mesh. So now let's see that feature. Now the reason why it doesn't show by default is because it's tagged as experimental. I'm not sure why it's marked as experimental since it's been out for a long time. And from what I've used it, it always worked exactly as intended. But in order to enable it, you go up here into Edit and go down into Preferences. Then you scroll down and find the ProBuilder tab. And then over here, you see a toggle for experimental features. So you just go ahead and click on it. And when you do, then don't touch anything else. It seems like it didn't do anything, but it's actually recompiling the ProBuilder scripts. So after a bit, you should see the box ticked. Yep, there it is. So experimental features are now enabled. So with that, you can now go into Tools, ProBuilder, go into experimental and open up the Boolean tool. All right, so this one takes two ProBuilder meshes. So let's select ours. So first of all, the wall, so just click and drag the wall. And now for the cube, I didn't actually ProBuilderize it yet, so I can't really drag it. So just select the cube and up here and just ProBuilderize it. And then now I can drag the reference. Okay, so I've got the wall and the cube. And now with both meshes selected, then over here we can select the operation. So the first one is intersection. So let's begin with this one. So just hit on apply. And now this one creates an actual brand new object. So it doesn't modify, it doesn't touch the original objects. So just move it onto the side to see it. And as you can see, this one is the interaction, the intersection between that one and that one. So just get that nice little corner there. So for example, in my case, for that video that I'm working on, where I wanted to create parts of this wall, this was the most useful. One. I just make the cube with the shape that I want, rotation that I want. Then I cut it and cut the wall into various parts. Okay, so here we've got our cut. Now let's look at the other operations. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. So the next one is union. So this one merges both objects. So again, if I head on apply, it creates a new one. And there you go. So now the wall has this cube attached to it, all of it in just one object. So perhaps this one could be useful for simplifying your scene in order to have fewer game objects. And then the last one, which is possibly the most useful, the subtraction operation. So this one cuts the mesh. So for example, let's put the cube a bit more down there. So something like this. Okay, and now hit on apply. And here's my new object. And yep, look at that. It looks almost perfectly like a wall with a hole for a door. So you can definitely see how this is very useful or perhaps shift it a bit upwards. And there you go. Now instead of a door, now we've got a nice hole for a window. So those are all the various modes. Also over here, I'm demonstrating on this nice simple wall, but this works on really anything. So for example, over here is a simple target object. Looks really nice. So it's a target on the stand, but now let's say you want just the target without the stand. So again, just probably on the rise of the target, then just grab the cube, 
put it in there and make an intersection make an intersection and hit on apply and yep over here i've got my target mesh so it's just the top part without the bottom also just one quick note here there's a slightly weird issue which is sometimes you can see that the mesh simply disappears that is the only issue that I found out with this, and that one has to do with the simple origin of the pivot. So when it cuts, apparently the pivot for the whole mesh goes all the way far away. So you can easily solve that by going just over here into the vertex selection mode, and just select a simple vertex, set as pivot, and there you go, now that one is working perfectly. So just one quick note, and everything else works perfectly. Okay, so as you can see, this feature is super useful and super easy to use, although it's hidden by default, but now you know how it's done. Stay tuned for that upcoming video, which has to do with blowing up some nice walls. Again, if you're looking for a more guided path with step-by-step -step lectures, then check out my complete courses. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.